Welcome to Partner Connection. I am Cameron DeBrew. I'm the pastor of Beulah Baptist Church and will serve as the host of this video series. Partner Connection is a platform where we can connect with our many ministry partners around the world and here at home so that they can share ministry updates, personal stories, and prayer requests. Thank you for watching and thank you for your faithfulness in partnering with God's people to grow His kingdom. I hope you enjoy this episode of Partner Connection. Welcome to this edition of Partner Connection. Today, I'm pleased to be joined by Pastor Ken, a teaching pastor at Beulah Baptist Church, and Pastor Steve Bainbridge, pastor at Mill Christian Fellowship uh, in the Toronto, Canada area. Uh, he's another one of our Canadian friends. It is a delight to have you guys with us. So welcome to Pastor Connection. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah. So uh, Pastor Steve is uh, Pastor's um, Mill Christian Fellowship. Uh, we got to know Pastor Steve when we sent a team two years ago to the Toronto area to to do a sports camp, and his his church, uh, Mill Creek uh, Mill Christian Fellowship, uh, was the host for our team. Uh, we uh, actually sent a team last year as well, and and they were again our host. I don't know if that was luck of the draw or how that worked out, but we are so delighted that we were able to cross paths with this church and with this pastor. Uh, we are actually, we were supposed to have a team on ground there this week. And uh, so our team is is so sorry that, that we're not able to be there and see the fine folks uh, uh, there at, at Mill Christian Fellowship. But Steve, we're glad that you're here. Uh, pro most of our folks, probably this is the first time they're seeing your face and maybe hearing your name. We have heard your church name and we have heard Pastor Steve, but tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your family. Oh, excellent. Yeah, thank you. So I'm a child of Toronto. I was born and raised in the city and uh, certainly did not grow up in a Christian environment. I came to Christ in my early 20s. I, you know, some people considered me a bad dude. I didn't think I was that bad, but compared to the gospel, I was horrific. Always right. And uh, so, yeah, I end up getting married to Christine and uh, I have four beautiful kids. And while I was a law enforcement officer out in Alberta, I finished off my first degree, which, you know, brought me into pastoral ministry. My first church, even though I'm a city guy, was way up in northern Ontario in a little town called Espanola, which was beside a town called Spanish. So we really like to use the Spanish you know, terminology in the north. And that's where I was ordained in 2016. In 2017, I accepted the call to be the pastor of what was at the time Aaron Mills Baptist Church. And that's now the Mill Christian Fellowship. And I came in 2017 with the vision to revitalize the church and to bring it into an active community hub where we don't just meet on Sundays or Bible studies, but we are meeting constantly with individuals from the community, bringing them in and just, you know, sharing the wonderful news of Jesus Christ with them. Uh, that is a very quick snapshot uh, to give you, you know, background and current my uh, daughter is just graduated high school, the one. I have two more in high school, so I'm a busy guy. And I'm surprised my hair's not gray yet, but I'm sure the next time we meet, it will be. And I have a young son, and he's been part of the sports camps, I think, for both years, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, year one and year two. So there we go. Well, I appreciate it. And, you know, as being a pastor, uh, Ken and I can have – have tried to relearn ministry and uh, a lot of things that we didn't learn in seminary. Uh, we're having to to figure out during this pandemic and during our closures and and those kinds of things. And uh, without telling our folks what what we have been through, uh, what is it like for your congregation? How how are you guys doing uh, right now? What are your plans for the future? How are you kind of re reassessing how we reach a community when we're not able to to do it in ways that we had normally done it right well with everyone else I mean we were just sidelined when the government shut us down back in March um, I think it was March 15th for us was our first service that we canceled 
but by March 16th, I was already researching and trying to, you know, get everything ready to go. Uh, so the minute that the government says you can now meet again, we were ready. Uh, the biggest part and the most difficult part it, where, where you folks are, you know, the constitution is seen a little bit different up here. We don't have as much freedoms. Uh, so there's a, we have to be a little sticky on making sure that we are abiding by the letter of the law right to the fullest, not just for insurance reasons, but uh, we can get a bit more legal trouble because we don't have as much freedoms. Um, so it's been difficult opening the church, doing it without drawing attention to ourselves, um, ensuring that we're not just meeting one public health line, but we have like, you know, the city, the region, the province, the federal, it, it, there's just so much. So with everybody being afraid to come back to church, you know, there's rightly so to be using caution, but I don't know how the media is down there, but there's been a lot of fear pumping in the articles up here. And there should be some fear if we're going to be irresponsible, but people are like, they feel like if they go to church, they're going to, they're going to get COVID. So our biggest struggle has been, if you can go to Walmart, if you can go to the Home Depot, you know, you can go shopping and get the kids shoes you're safe to come to church. Mm -hmm. And that's been our biggest challenge uh, still to date. So we have taken a lot of our focus that used to be all in. So we used to have all of our baptism classes, senior ministry, small groups. We are now taking them all online. And we're going to continue to do online um, you know, classes and, and small groups, even as uh, COVID-19 slowly fades away. And we're becoming more of a multimedia church now with the focus that Sunday you still need to come in. So that's been the biggest challenge. Uh, you know, I'm sure the same with, with Beulah. We're not graduates of, you know, the Performing Arts School of Camera and Audio Technicians and how to run wires and, you know, make our faces look good. But the Lord has blessed um, our people. He's given wisdom to some of our folks to do these things, and it is working. Uh, at this point, we're about to enter up here. I'm not sure if it's the same uh, where you are, but it's called phases, phase one, phase two, phase three. So we're about to enter phase three shortly. We're hoping to see more people come to church, but that will mean we won't recognize everyone because they're going to have masks over their face. Mm -hmm. uh, the only people that don't is the praise team and the pastor. Mm -hmm. So we're excited about this. And we're not sure how it's going to look at this point. Are we shooting ourselves in the foot? Because if we give everybody everything online, why come back? But we're still trying to make people and want people to come back because that's where community is. So, yeah. So, so the thing that we have learned, uh, Steve, is um, we have given every, everything online for, for several weeks. Like I told you earlier, we have been open now for six weeks, but we are beginning to see just a, our, our people are starving for, for connection, for communication, for community. Uh, and, and as much as we've been able to do online and as much as we've been able to connect with them uh, virtually, it is just not the same. And uh, so we have kind of gotten to a point now where we are, we are trying to creatively figure out ways that we can physically get our people together in small groups outside of our church building where, where we are being a little more restrictive inside of the building. But our state is, is allowing us to join in, in, in groups around somebody's pool or in somebody's backyard. And so we're trying to, to just be creative in that sense. So, so I hear you, brother, our, our folks, uh, our folks are just starving for community and starving for connection. And, uh, we are praying for, for your community and for your church and, and, uh, the community that you have built there and, and hopefully a growing community there. So pastor Ken has led, uh, both of our mission teams to to the Toronto area and specifically to to work alongside of Pastor Steve's church. Uh, so Pastor Ken, I'm going to turn this over to you and kind of let you ask Steve a few questions and um, then I will close this up. All right. All right. First main question, Steve. Good to see you again, by the way. Um, uh, dill pickle chips, still selling them up there? Ketchup chips? Absolutely. Okay, good, good. Um, COVID hadn't taken them away. Do you all need some? I'm sure we can, you know, try to get some over the border. You know what? That, that might be awesome. That might, you know, just calm people down down here and just you know set what? everything at ease. 
Actually, I'll send some. Look out for okay. a package. If, if the food is allowed to go over, I'm not sure how it works, but we'll see what we can do. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Hey, so in, in all seriousness, um, how, as a pastor, um, in the situation that you're in, because, you know, you were talking about how your restrictions are a little bit different. How do you, how, what are some ways that you have been leading your people through this? Um, what are some things you've been saying to them to, to take care of them spiritually? You understand what I'm saying? I I'm do. Asking? I do. The, the two major things I, I promote mostly is, of course, the gospel is sufficient for every battle that we are facing. And one of the main areas that I focus on is that we are the church. You know, it's not the building and it's not the bricks, but we are part of the same church that you're part of, even though we're in different locations. And I remind them that we are united in one spirit. We are united in, in Jesus Christ and the, the gospel proclamation that basically fuels us to continue not to be stuck in the moment. But on the flip side, I, I, I am known for being a little bit more, you know, rough around the collar. And I do remind our people all the time that during the time between Nero and Diocletian, I mean, the church faced a lot of problems and we continued to meet. We continued to do what the church was called to do, even if our lives were going to be at cost. I remind the church that you know, we've survived pandemics before. We have survived great plagues, the bubonic plague. And throughout history, the church has never shut down. And so what I remind them is even in a time of great fear, a time of uncertainty with the media and what they're pushing, we know the church is going to survive. We are the church. We have a responsibility to rise up, to proclaim that gospel. Specifically, if there's a bug out there, that's going to take people's lives and they're going to die without knowing Christ. That amplifies our, our positions that we need to be more active. And so I think by sharing that with them, mission focus, evangelism focus, it kind of takes our mind off our little circle of fear and reminds us there's a bigger picture. There's more at play here and then we can still function without being paralyzed with everything going on. So it just kind of follow up with that. How are your people responding to that? Probably this 50, 50, you know, our, our, our more, uh, you know, uh, seasoned veterans, uh, who have walked with the Lord for some time. I mean, rightly so they're, they're scared. Uh, they will, they, you know, they've announced that they're probably not going to come back to church until there's a vaccine and rightly so. I mean, they, you know, but our younger folks, you know, they, they're encouraged, they're challenged. Uh, they realize that there's a lot of things that we don't control and COVID is one of those things. So as long as we keep pushing that gospel, keep pushing the message to why we meet, um, it reinforces that this, you know, this will pass. And then one day, you know, it might be a knee injury. <laughs> It might be somebody gets diagnosed with cancer. And does it mean we stop proclaiming? No, it means we proclaim all the louder while our days are still here. Um, so tell me about, um, I eventually want to get to just how we can pray for y'all specifically. But before we get there, I, I, thinking about our, you know, we spent the last two, two summers with you, two weeks in during each summer with you guys. And man, it just really established a connection. I, I felt a kinship with you that first Sunday we came back in 2018 and um, just really felt a kindred spirit. And that obviously has continued to this day. And um, so we love you guys a ton. And um, we, we consider ourselves family with you from, from afar. Um, so with our interaction with, with, uh, with your church during um during the upward sports ministry, I'm curious as to, as to how, what kind of fruits from those ministries ha have you seen? You know, we, we go in for a week, we come out, you know, we leave, but we interact with a lot of kids in the community and, and we get gone. But um, what are kind of the ripple effects that happen after we've gone the past two summers? Right. So I think it was uh, Ortland who put that article out years ago, but I think it was called uh, Monument 
museum monument mausoleum. And it was kind of talking about the three different uh, church stages that a church can go through. And before our partnership, uh, our church was moving out of that kind of mausoleum museum stage. We knew we needed to have movement. We needed to have engagement and we just didn't know how. And when we were introduced to Hans and he was talking about, you know, this upward sports program and how it's a great opportunity for churches who don't have so much of an opportunity to do such things. We can partner with other churches, you know, of like-minded belief and, and reach out. We were really excited. And so from 2018, that first summer where you, where you came and your team was there with Sherry and coach and everyone else, uh, for the first time, our church had a refire. It's like, right. Okay, this, this can be done. This is what it's about. And individuals who weren't sure about signing up, they weren't sure if they should be out at a sports camp, you know, they're in their 60s, what can they do? We're so blessed by serving the drinks or, you know, being part of huddle time and just realizing that they're, they're really making an impact here. And so after the 2018 sports camp, all the things that I was trying to push on the board, say this is what we need to do. They were physically now able to see some fruit to why we need to do such things. And that was been a huge blessing. Uh, we saw some children come in. Uh, you know, there's one young lady that we all interacted with. She was asking a lot of questions. She was coming in a little bit with her, with her parents. Uh, her dad turned out to have a, a very serious illness. So they were, you know, they were seeking and searching and want to know more about God. And, you know, this young lady through the ministry that was taking place goes, I think I know of a place where we can get the answer. And so we saw them come in for a while. They faded out over time, unfortunately, but at least we were able to see a little bit of follow-up. Then in the 2019 camp, it was like excitement. You know, 2018 was like, I don't know. But then 2019 is like, wow, the team's coming back and people were just pumped. And I don't know if you remember, we had a lot of people there from the mill. They didn't even sign up to help. They just wanted to be there and they just wanted to hang out and, and see you all. And, but then we closed off that camp, remember, with that big, huge community uh, barbecue. That has sparked major benefits for us because people are now coming into the church. And even till to this day, so almost, yeah, exactly a year later, you had that big barbecue. We saw what was going on with the kids and they're coming into the church and asking questions. So we've seen a lot of fruit. Not so much numerical fruit, but we are now in the community. The people know that as a, as a Christian church, it's a Baptist church in the community that cares for them. And I think we couldn't ask for anything else because now we've earned uh, a, a place to now express the gospel to them in ways we couldn't do before. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, we, we feel privileged to just be able to be a part, be a part of that. I mean, it's a, you know, uh, Cameron mentioned early on that uh, how did we get hooked up? Luck of the draw, you know, I know he was kidding around, but I, I really feel like God sovereignly made this partnership happen. And, yeah. um, you know, for whatever encouragement we have been to you guys, you guys have been a major encouragement to us. And yeah. um, to just be able to be be a part of ministry up there um, and, 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 to be around people from so many different nations that y'all get to see every day, but we don't, uh, it's just been a, it's been a blessing to our people and it's kind of opened our eyes to the, to the nations, um, in different ways as well. So we're yeah. thankful for, for our well, us too. And that, you know, one thing just to encourage all your, all your folks, um, when you, when your team's up here, I mean, Canada, specifically Toronto, they call it a multicultural melting pot. And we have people that will come over from India, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, Myanmar, unreached Vietnam and visit. And when they're visiting, they're going to take whatever they hear back home. And I, I think you shared this story with your missions team about that one, that one boy who we thought was talking during our huddle time, but he was actually translating in Mandarin or Cantonese to this young man who's going to be going home or doesn't speak any English. So it just shows you the impact. I don't think you and I will even know until eternity. Well, um, tell it, I want you to tell us how we can pray for you. And first, I, I want you to tell us how we can pray for you and your family specifically. Um, uh, I know your, your wife has come through some health things. You know, maybe you can update us on that. Uh, and just your kids, you personally, um, but also your church as well. So how can we well, pray for you? Well, thank you. Thank you for that, Ken. 
uh, for family, uh, yeah, keep praying for Christine. You know, there's going to be more surgeries on the horizon, and that's just going to be part of our normal life for some time. Uh, we're in a transition now where our girls are getting older, and we want to make sure, you know, pastoral ministry is a busy vocation. And as a family, we need prayer that we have this time to invest in each other's lives, not just only the church life. Uh, you know, so every family has problems and difficulties and when we're growing up. So I'm sure you know what those are. So if you can just keep you know, us in prayer in this way that we, we see Jesus as the best gift. You know that he is that inexhaustible treasure of goodness because we can get so distracted so easily. Uh, you know, so that's really important for me as a pastor uh, for wisdom. You know, I, I, one, one time I'm supposed to stand on my leg and say, go forth. But on the other leg, I still have to care and ensure that people are taking proper responsibility with this new threat that we have uh, in this health crisis. So I need wisdom. I don't want to come off across too harsh, but I also want to make sure that people know that we're going to march forward with our, our banners held high. Uh, for the church that we just continue to grow, that we continue to be a church that just preaches the gospel, loves our community, and we're known as a safe place. And when people want to have the questions answered, they know they can come to people who truly love them. You know, not numbers, not programs, but real people loving our people and leading them to the one who loves all of us. So those would be the biggest prayers, uh, you know, in going forward at this point. Yeah. Great. Thank you for letting us know how we can. No, thank you. Thank you. I know that we're always praying for you guys. And man, we miss you. If I could just kind of jump through this screen right now and just give you a hug, I would, but it's illegal, right? You can't jump through screens. So <laughs> yeah. We so we so we're 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 looking forward to you guys maybe coming down and, and helping us at some point. Uh yes. and just kind of let me piggyback on something else that you said. I think it's a, an important transition has been made with our congregation in in our understanding of of mission trip. Uh, when we were coming along to to help a local community, a local pastor, a local church to build that relationship, I, I think that took all of the burden off of us to to have to to continue those relationships and continue. You know, we saw our job as coming alongside of the work that your church is doing in that community, and that has been big for us, Steve. Uh, that that has been a turning point for us. And our folks understood that immediately uh, and, and joined in that mission. And I'm so thankful for Hans and Brandy. I'm so thankful for your church and, and your congregation, the way you accepted that help and the way you used our group and our team. Uh, I was amazed that uh, when our team came back, they they were showing pictures, of course, and and how much even not only that our our sense of humors were the same, our you know our personalities were kind of the same, but even our buildings looked very similar. Uh, I, I was just amazed at at how those things kind of happened, and and, and yes, I was just kind of playing around when I said luck of the draw, but it it has been a blessing for us to to have some consistency, uh, not necessarily with your community, but with the believers uh, there in your church. And so that we can help each other, encourage each other in, in reaching our own communities. And, you know, God has placed us in this community to reach this community. And uh, he has placed you and your congregation in your community to reach your community. And uh, so I am glad that we can partner with each other to help each other uh, in in that endeavor. It is, it, it is such a wonderful blessing uh, to be a child of God and to be working in his kingdom. And brother, I am so glad to meet you. I'm so glad to see your face and, and hear your voice. And, and our team is going to be really excited to hear your updates and hear from you. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we look forward to uh, our team come, being able to come back up there or you being able to send a team uh, down to, to assist us. In, in some way in the future. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, God bless you, my brother, and uh, thank you for joining, joining us for this edition of Partner Connections.